Okay guys, uh, I'm going to make a video on, um, on a boat steering gearbox. I went online, uh, YouTube, there's a lot of, there's a lot of videos on how to make, uh, how to work on a gearbox for a car, you know, power steering <coughs> and such, but not on a boat, so I said, I'll stop what I'm doing, I want to make a video, because it might help somebody that might have a problem. Okay, this is what happened. Last 4th of July, I took some friends out on the, you know, we went to the boat, had some, some, you know, some things to eat, snack, dips, and a couple of drinks, and I said, okay, let's go out for a little cruise, and let's go park where they have the show, the fireworks show. So we crank up the engines and you know I backed out the boat and I went out to the channel. When I got to the channel, I went to steer and the helm was frozen. So I could maneuver with the engines because I have two engines and I could maneuver and I couldn't budge that steering wheel, which is this puppy right here. This thing was completely, completely frozen. So I said, wow, what the hell happened? Well, what happened was that the, oh, and I had to go back because I didn't want to be floating around with no, no control. So I went back and I parked it again in the slip, tied it up, and we had to just walk to where the show was going to be, a, bo a, bl a block or two away, and we saw the show. But since I've been working on the boat for a year off and on, I was working mostly on the interior. And... <clears throat> I, I would run the engines, warm them up, put them in gear, make sure the, the tranny is circulating and everything while it was tied up, perfectly normal. Everything was working fine, but I never bothered to move the steering wheel because I'm not driving. So, when it was time to take it out, after a year and a half, possibly a little bit more than that, uh, the steering was frozen, and then I found out later, when I went back to find out, that the rudders had crustaceans or well no, I'm not gonna call it crustacean a, a calcification it's like a magnesium buildup around the shaft so I got down there with a wire brush and, and a blade and you know something like this and I scraped and I you know brushed it with wire you know cleaned it all up smeared it smeared it up with grease up and down the shaft and on the on the big bolt where it holds it and then I got a big pry uh, bar, a big screwdriver, put it to, to the uh, through the handle there that goes to the rod and I just moved it so the cable wasn't wasn't stuck. That was the first thing that came to mind. I thought it was the steering cable which is very expensive. It's not cheap. So while I was there I said okay the steering mechanism is working now. The cable is moving. Uh, I checked the steering. The steering moved no problem but I didn't like the way it was kind of it, it was always bothering me that it was kind of moving uh, too loose so I took it apart brought everything back here uh, sanded it painted it the steering steering handle goes there and this goes on the on the dash on the fire glass this goes behind it goes here and that's your steering deal. Now, I wanted to show you if you have play in and out, it's real easy. Once you take this piece, you just hammer that in. This is kind of loose now, but you hammer it in. And what I do, put a wrench over it so it sits on the washer on that. Uh, by the way, this, this is not threaded in. This is uh, pounded in, pressured in, and I don't have a press, so this is the next best thing. I just get a little hammer and tap it uh, in, and that takes the play out. Now, it's still going to have a little play, you know, about, that's a quarter inch, but that's fine. The, the bigger play that I had, it was on the gearbox. So let me put this away here. 
And let me show you the gearbox, which I cleaned it with gasoline and then painted it. And I went and I ordered some bushings. I got them on eBay. These are called flange bushings and they I did know because I've never opened one of these before. I did know that that this is supposed to have anything. I just saw that it was lacking in grease. So <clears throat> when I took it apart, I noticed that I had one bushing and this is the original. It only one bushing that was sitting on the on the uh, shaft here for the gear. So in this bushing, it's a little shorter, you can tell, than the new one. So there's a space here that it needs to be this size. I'm gonna grind this down. I got other ones there. I'm gonna grind it down to the same height so it'll fit in there and, and sit uh, tightly. Bushing goes on this side. And then the gear shaft goes in there. And then you drive the whole gear um, and you insert it in there and you got to tap it because it has to fit into the into the right um, channel uh, it's not too easy the best way is to remove I don't know if you can see this I'm pointing let me see here let me bring it down a little bit so you guys see what I'm doing let me check off the screen to see if it's pointing in the right direction. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so take the gear out. And yesterday I started to put uh, marine grease. I got this little tube here, and I was using a little popsicle spoon uh, stick because my grease gun it's in the boat. So. There you go. Uh, and I put some grease all over here. I'm not done yet. But I just want to show you the assembly. Before you do that, obviously, you have to put the main gear that's, that, that attaches to the steering. The gearing, well, that grease is really, <laughs> now it's all over the place. The gearing uh, goes in there. Oh, and let me give you the, the packet number of the bushings. They cost about $2.69 a piece. And this is the bushing number. It's it's by Stens and it's two two five dash six hundred. Cost me like twelve bucks, almost thirteen bucks, and it took about four or five days to get it. Um, the bushing locks it up very tightly, so now everything that when you try to be, uh, fit it back in, it's tighter because obviously that bushing is really hang, hanging on to the. And, and, and see how how free this thing spins. So it won't have a problem uh, with with turning. Now the gear goes here, and the steering the steering goes attached here to the square knob, and that's what gives it the. Uh, so as you can tell, that helps out a lot. And then when you're ready to insert the cable, you can insert the cable with this already closed up because what you do is you insert the cable through this channel, it'll grab a canal, let me see, and, and the canal has grooves where the cable has a coil spring around it and that's what grabs the channel there, the canal. It, gra it grabs those groups, so when you're turning your steering, it's making that cable going in and out. That way, that's the way you steer the boat. So for the guys that have never seen this box, don't be afraid of it. A lot of people say, ah, oh, just buy a new one. You know, you know what? The chances of buying a new one, the same brand, which I don't even know the brand because there's nothing here that tells me a name except there's a number. And this housing here is 21002, and that doesn't tell me anything. I didn't want to bother going to a junkyard and try to find this stuff and try to match it to my existing uh, equipment and to fit the steering. I said, you know what, let's fix it. I looked it in, looked into it, all the gears are in good shape, nothing is broken. 
just normal wear and tear and this is not a, a power gear this is just a steering gear so you're not going to put force or torque or anything uh, it'll work just fine so fit that in there see that shim that bushing really I think it's better if I just put the bush in here first. It's so tight that the grease spills out. All right. Fit that in there. And then you drop that in. So it's it's nice and smooth and then you drop the other one in there and you got a seal casing now I don't know if you can tell it has a little lip right here now that's why I'm going to use the short bushing because this is the only one that's going to fit here even though I can still narrow the other ones but it goes in and it locks in see that it locks in to take it out you have to open up the slit and then bring it out so I'll show you this one here it goes in but it doesn't lock because it's longer and being that it it's opening up the bushing now it won't fit into the hole in the case in the uh, in the casing and the housing so I'm going to use the short one to give me that smooth uh, see perfect and then the other one goes on this side now this one fits very good but you have to actually hammer it hammer it in so I have to put it on the vise put my my uh, my uh, my wrench over it and tap it because as it goes in it wants to get pushed out and you don't want that so um, I'm going to I want to finish smearing more grease on the uh, gears because it, 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 it should be pumped, uh, you know, I should pump a lot of it in the housing before inserting it in there, uh, before I can do this and, and, and close it. See how nice it closed? So then, keep it nice and grease. So I'm going to keep putting grease in there, put it together, and then I'll just take it completely assembled and then pop it in. This little doohickey here is like a counterweight. And basically, this thing just goes uh, goes there. So I'm gonna work on this, and then put in this bushing after I finish up greasing up the whole the whole case. And then I'll probably show it again when it's assembled. Okay, guys. So if you have a problem with your steering, don't be afraid of it. You can handle it. Fix it.